Hey, well, welcome to part two of uh, this three-part video I'm making about replacing this uh, North Cold 1200 RV fridge with a residential fridge. It's a Samsung RF18. And you can check out the uh, video description for the full model number. I just don't have it off the top of my head, but I'm sure happy with it, I'll tell you that. I'm um, about four days post-install now. And in this part, we're going to remove the shelf and uh, do the uh, plumbing on the ABS plumbing. I might call it a PVC a couple times in the video, but uh, it is ABS plumbing. It's a black plastic pipe, uh, easy to work with. Once we get the plumbing done, then we'll uh, wrap this one up, and then uh, in part three, we'll do all the electrical work and get the new shelf put in. So uh, with that, uh, let's get on with part two. We got the old one out. I should say I got the old one out. And it's outside now, and here's what's uh, left. Sorry about the uh, singular there. But i got to pull this shelf out. And I've already kind of cut the insulation back, put it aside so I could reuse it. I've got to move this electrical outlet. Let's see how much work it's going to be to get this out. So, I think I'm going to just uh, split that in half. Okay, what's in the way? I think if I go to right along there. Well, good morning everybody. Uh, back at this little project again and uh, here's where I ended it yesterday with uh, basically the shelf removed. And uh, so what I've got to get taken care of today is I got to move this drain line. I'm going to route this drain line out and around this way and then back into that. I bought another clean out because uh, having that many angles in it, uh, elbows in it, uh, it's not such a good idea. but. Uh, It'll have to do, <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and move those water lines, although I think I could probably get by without it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, once I get that drain line moved, then I'll take a look at the water lines. I bought parts to do it because I'm so far from Home Depot. But uh, anyway, and then I bought some foam to fill those holes. Oh, and by the way, uh, anyway, if you look at that right there, you can see at some point uh, uh, that old unit had just about caught the coach on fire. In fact, it did catch on fire a little bit. It's pretty ashed out back up in there. Um, but uh, uh, I knew about that. I bought some foam. I'm going to foam that closed. <clears throat> but uh, I knew about that because I'd had this fridge out before. Here's the starting point, and then uh, we'll get started on uh, getting these drain lines and stuff rerouted here. <coughs> Uh, 
So I've got uh, some uh, PVC outside. I'm gonna have to go cut myself a piece. I want it. So 22 inches. 22 inches. So it looks like we got a dry fit here. Uh, I do want to remind everybody that uh, there are minimum clearances above the furnace that you see there sitting on the floor. And also, you want to make sure that you maintain a pitch in the line. It is a drain line, so you want to make sure that it is uh, running downhill because uh, that's the way drain lines work is that they need to pitch down. I can see from this here that I'm not going to be able to get enough clearance to uh, give myself the one inch clearance above the shelf, so I'm going to have to uh, move uh, this pipe uh, underneath these uh, water lines and stuff that go into the cabinet there. Okay, so uh, we've got that uh, drain line relocated underneath the uh, water line and gas line there. And uh, I did have to modify that cabinet a little bit uh, with my utility knife. I chopped out that hole a little bit deeper so that I could bring that uh, incoming drain line down. So it's fitting pretty good. Uh, I'm going to do a quick dry fit here. Again, check my clearances. Keeping in mind that uh, right there on top of the furnace is a minimum clearances list. And it indicates that one inch of clearance is the minimum you want above the top of the furnace. And so I'll be uh, making sure that that is what I have. I'm going to take this uh, one by or two by two here, which is really about an inch and a half. And I'll just slide it over there to the wall. I have a, a line marked on the wall at one inch. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, looks like I got a pretty good fit. All my clearances seem to be in uh, pretty good shape. Uh, I'm going to sit here and talk to myself for a minute while I figure out what to glue up and when uh, because uh, once you glue things together uh, you're committed and I want to make sure that this is right because uh, be honest with you I've never really liked plumbing uh, in fact uh, I remember I built a sprinkler system uh, for my house in Idaho many years ago and I bet it took me 20 trips to the store to get all the parts I needed to get the damn thing in and running right I remember distinctly needing one Otkin clamp uh, to finish the system and having to drive the 38 miles to Home Depot to pick the cotton picking thing up. Apply a liberal coat of cement to, to the depth of the socket, leave no uncoated surface. Never fails. Alrighty, two down, couple to go.
always like to hold them for just a couple seconds just to make sure that uh, the pipe doesn't push out. to do okie doke welcome back uh, finished up the uh, gluing up of the drain line here and uh, it's in pretty good shape I've let it stand for about 10 minutes uh, just to make sure that all the joints are nice and firm so what I want to do right now is, is I want to block this uh, pipe and I'm going to get some tube twos underneath it here and secure it with some plumbers perforated tape I'm going to uh, adjust this blocking a little bit with some thinner pieces till I get it to where I want it. And then I'm going to screw the blocking to the floor and the plumber's tape to the blocking. So I removed the old gas line from the fridge. Here you see it in the wall. I've capped it off below. I'll show you that later. Okay, so let's review. Here you can see the drain line. I've strapped it securely to the wall and the floor with blocking. This pipe is really solidly mounted because I don't want it vibrating and the joints failing or it rattling. I've also included a clean out here because of the extra elbows I want to make sure you can get in and get it cleaned out properly. I installed the clean out in the same location as the old one. All right, well there you have part two. Uh, we got the shelf out of the way, uh, got all the plumbing moved around, uh, did a little bit of a minor electrical relocation of some of the smaller wires there, got them tucked into the wall, so now we're ready to do the uh, 110 outlet and uh, do the breaker work back in the uh, bedroom, and that'll be part three. So be sure and come back and check those out. If you like what you're seeing, be sure and subscribe. I've got a lot of how-to videos coming on how to uh, keep your RV up. As I've mentioned in past videos, I try to do as much of the work myself just to save the money. As a full-time RVer uh, and semi-retired, I do live on a fairly limited budget. So, uh, you know, you got to kind of make uh, ends meet where you can. Until next time, when we take care of the electrical work on this project, peace.